Hello, today we are going to draw a wanderer's compass. The compass is often used in actual travel, but it's very symbolic and a lot of people who enjoy travel or like to explore really enjoy it. So I have several things here that are round and that can help me draw circles. Um, I looked for something roughly the size of my piece of paper with a little bit of edge. So I'm going to use this as my guide for the first circle on our compass. And it does not have to be a really super perfect circle. So if you don't have something round that's the right size, you can find something round that isn't the right size and just go on the outside of it a little bit. So you can see that my circle is not perfect. And this is gonna be my inner circle because I think I want my compass to be a little bit bigger. So let's see, is this? No, I'm just gonna have to freehand this one. So I'm just going to try to stay the same distance away from that first circle as I go all the way around. And it's not gonna matter a lot if it's a little bit off and it's not perfect. Just go with it. So there's my two circles. So that's gonna be our outer and inner circles. Then what we'll do is add the top part. So the top part is easy. It is just kind of a rounded little rectangle there. And then we'll put a more square shape. And then the little ring at the top. And then we will add one more ring on the outside of that. So there we go. We have our basic compass shape done. Let's go in and add our main four dots. So right at the center, and these don't have to be big, they're just for reference. So right at the center on top and bottom. So right at, at 12 o'clock and six o'clock, let's put a dot. And then we'll also put a dot at three o'clock and nine o'clock. So those are our main directions, right? So now let's come, we wanna come halfway between these two, right about halfway between. So that would be where, about right here? And let's put a dot and then directly across, we wanna go halfway between these two and put a dot. I can't say something a clock because we don't have a number there. Okay, and then same thing here. So halfway between these two, we're gonna put a dot and then halfway between these two. So these dots are gonna help us get the rest of our elements into our compass. Let's start by just putting a big plus. So we're gonna skip some space. Maybe let's come between these two dots and we're gonna make a large up and down straight line. Straightish. If it's not perfect, don't worry. Maybe mine wants to be a tiny bit taller. And then we're gonna do the same thing sideways. So let's go sideways. I wanna go a little further out. All right, so we have a plus and it doesn't touch. We've got a little space between all those. Then we're gonna come out and from the center, we're gonna go 
toward that little halfway point, but we're not gonna go all the way, not even really halfway. We're gonna just make a little line. We want them to be roughly the same length. Let's see, roughly the same. All right, so now we have a great little start. This one's a little longer, so I'm gonna have to make the other ones a tiny bit longer. And we are gonna start with our middle part of our star. And since we've set all of these things, we just need to go here to here Here to here. Oh gosh. All right. Pay no attention to that. It'll be fine. Uh, here to there. So we're making this really interesting four pointed star. and it has lots of dimension, and it's giving us that compass rose, nostalgic map feel. So there is the first part of our star. Now we can come in and let's just add a little bit of a diagonal pattern. This can be very light, but let's just add a little bit of a diagonal pattern to that one. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other four corresponding. So this will help our star have a little bit more dimension and these lines don't have to be super heavy. These lines can be very scratchy, very simple. My pen does not like to write on the side of its nib and that is making this a little more difficult to show you. But you've got it, right? So just kind of scratchy. These are simply lines that we can cover up with a color later. And then over here, this pen does, like I said, does not want to write. And if it helps for you to rotate your paper when you do these lines, go ahead and do that. Mine is taped so that I don't move it out of your field of vision on the camera. Okay, so there's our first star. Now we can come in and put those other triangles and we wanna remember that we're pointing toward those little points. So these can be a little bit wider of a triangle if you want them to but we're just gonna add this to each of these other open sections. So there's three, and then we'll put one more here. And we can come in and split those as well. So I'll split these in half. And it sort of should meet up at that same <laughs> middle point. Sometimes mine don't because it's all right. I don't mind if it looks a little bit silly or whimsical. So now we're going to do the same thing we did here, but we're going to make sure that we go the other direction. So I'm going to start and go up and I'm doing the, that opposite side. So that just helps it have a little bit more oomph. I think I like it. 
You could always just do this in different colors, but I it's helpful for me to go ahead and get started with a clear vision of what goes where. So now we have our center done and we can come in here and we can put some fun little letters. You don't have to put letters. You can put like a little tick mark if you want to, but I'm just gonna make some very curly letters. So it's like the regular letter, but you make the edges much curlier. So like here is an E, but let's curl it up a little bit there curl it down here. There, it's just a little fancier. And then W, let's do a swirly curly W. And there you have it, that's a good time. And then this can be, let's do, hmm, a little, Thing. I think I'm also going to make tiny lines on the other sides of my letters. This is where your creativity really can come through. If you want to do something different, you can. So I just added some little lines. Whoops. I forgot your line. Sorry. There's some lines there. And then you can put some little tick marks in between if you want to. And they can be dashes, they can be dots, whatever you want to do. And depending on what direction you want your compass to be pointing, you can always add the main hand of the compass and you can make it in any shape that you want. It can be like a heart, it could be an arrow, really anything goes. I'm trying to decide what I'm going to make mine. I haven't decided just yet. But I'm going to add these little in between e marks and I'm not really counting to, to make sure that there's the same amount of marks between each direction because I don't care. It makes absolutely no difference to me. All right, let's see. Where will my compass be pointing? I think I'm still thinking about it. All right, so this is also gonna have some decoration to it. This is where you can start getting creative on your own. You can do things exactly the way that I'm doing them. Or if you have some ideas of your own and you'd prefer to do something else, that's what I want you to do. This is gonna have some lines. Just some very thin, straight up and down lines. Then what should this, should this have some lines? Let's give it, I'll give it some sideways lines. just to give it a little personality. And then we can also put some detailing here kind of on these edges, like it's a little shiny. And I do that by adding some dots and then maybe a little bit of broken line that's very thin. Maybe we need a line over here too. You can see these lines aren't perfect and I don't mind. All right. <sighs> now what are we gonna do? I still have to decide which direction. So I'm gonna put a dot right in the middle. 
So that's where my little arrow is sitting. I think mine is gonna be pointing northwest. So let, I'm gonna go like that. So that's gonna be my arrow. So it can be a little bit thicker. Little bit thicker, there we go. And then you can decide how fancy your arrow is gonna be, or maybe it's just gonna be plain. That's okay too. But I enjoy having things look very ornate. So mine's gonna be a little bit ornate. And maybe it's gonna have a little bit of fancy here as well. So there's my compass pointing sort of northwest. And you don't have to put a point on your compass if you don't want to, but you know, it's fun. I did it. And then to make it look just a little more antique, I'm gonna add some little age spots here and there. And you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But now you can decorate the background with whatever you want. Um, but that is the drawing part of the compass. So I'm gonna sign mine to show that I'm done. Put this cap on. I'm gonna let it dry a moment and then I'm gonna come in and paint it. Before I get started painting, I always like to add some washi tape or painter's tape around the edge of my piece. This helps me do two things. First of all, it helps keep my paper from warping. I'm gonna use watercolor and sometimes that can really make my paper want to curl and come up off the table. So I'm taping partway on the paper and partway on the table. Now you can see this is a faster than real life <laughs> demonstration of how I painted it. The background is a very light blue. And then I went and painted areas that were not touching the blue and made sure the blue was dry before I went back in and painted areas next to it. On top of the yellow, while it was still wet, I added some brown. And then for the compass rose, I decided to make it red and kind of a teal color, very antique looking. I try not to color stuff that's right next to other wet colors because that can lead to unsavory paint parties where the paint kind of bleeds around. For the background, I started with purple purple and blue, and then I added more of the color around the edges and added more blue and some black. And while that was still wet, I added some speckles of yellow. I love the way it turned out. It made that background look very antique and magical. And then prior to removing all of that tape, I'm gonna wait for it to dry completely then when I take that tape off, I have these gorgeous white borders and it's ready to show off. Absolutely love it. I hope yours turns out well. Thanks for joining me.